In this video, we are going to talk about seeds that should be fermented in order to enhance their germination later on in the season. It's interesting that this fermentation process is not as well understood as perhaps you would think it would be. The process has only been studied, or the most significant research on this process was done in the 1960s on grass seed. And it was found that grass seed does much better in the spring in terms of germination and the quality of the plant produced by the seed. That discovery led scientists to look at some of the other seeds that seem to need fermentation in order to enhance germination. The two seeds that in the, the uh, videos we are discussing that really need fermentation are tomato seeds and cucumber seeds. For the purposes of demonstration, we are just going to use tomato seed. What you do with tomatoes is, in collecting seed, you scoop out the seed cavities that also contain some tomato pulp. You fill a bucket with water and then you dump all of the pulp which contains the seed into your bucket of water. Now, for the purposes of this video, we have a bowl. Don't use a bowl, use a bucket. What you do then is you have dumped the seed into the bucket and what you want to do then is put the bucket somewhere where it does not get direct sunlight. It doesn't have to be dark. It cannot get direct sunlight. And you leave it for five days or seven days. Sometimes it takes 10 days in order for you to achieve the fermentation process, for that process to finish. What happens is that the pulp floats on the surface of the water and a mold or scum, yuck, a mold or scum forms on the surface and between the, and as that mold or scum forms, the seeds are experiencing fermentation. The non-viable seeds get caught in the scum get trapped in the scum. The viable seeds, the viable seeds float to the bottom of your bucket. As you can see in this clear glass bowl, you see all those seeds on the bottom? Those are viable tomato seeds. The seeds, and you can see just a few of them, trapped in the scum those are the non-viable seeds. Now, once the fermentation process is finished, what you do is you put your hose on gentle and you let the water rise and flow out of the bucket. And if the hose is on gentle enough, all the scum and the non-viable seeds will flow out of the bucket and you will clean the viable seeds that are on the bottom. You let the hose run until the water in your bucket is completely clear. And once that happens, you can then pour the clear water off and take your viable seeds and put, pour them into a tin pie plate. That's how the fermentation process works with tomatoes. Cucumbers are just slightly different because what you want to do is let the cucumber get overripe, then scrape the seeds and the pulp that comes with the seeds into a bucket and use the exact same process that we just described for tomatoes. In both cases, once these seeds are completely dry, they will have much better germination than if they did not go through the fermentation process. At the beginning of this video, I singled out 
cucumbers and tomatoes as plants that need fermentation for their seeds. I forgot that eggplant is also a plant that needs to have its seeds fermented. So here you see what's coming along as a beautiful apple green eggplant. When this eggplant is fully mature, we will then take the seeds from the seed cavity and we will ferment those seeds as we described with both the cucumber and demonstrated with the tomato seed. So eggplants, tomatoes, and cucumbers must have their seed go through a fermentation process to totally enhance their ability to germinate. If you have enjoyed this video, please come to our website www.harvesting-history.com where you can purchase heirloom non-GMO vegetables, flowers, and herbs. Please like, subscribe, and share with your friends our channel. On the left side of your screen, there is our most recent video. And on the right side of your screen, is one of our playlists. We are Harvesting History, Seeding the Future.